Great. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Martin Schütz. I'm a member of the Amazon Quantum Solutions Lab. Um, first off, I'd like to thank the organizers for putting together this terrific uh, program and um, giving me the chance to talk a little bit about what we are up to um, at Amazon when it comes to quantum computing. Um, and also specifically share with you um, some stories, uh, how we engage with customers specifically in, in uh, finance. So one of the questions um, that we actually get the most um, um, is why does Amazon actually start now in, in quantum with quantum computing? And like everything at Amazon, it starts with our customers. So over the last few years, um, we have seen an increasing amount of um, discussions with our customers where quantum computing pops up. We've seen an increasing desire to understand the long-term long transformative potential of quantum computing to their business. And therefore also uh, a strong desire to um, start planning ahead today manage the risk and simply get um, quantum ready and prepare uh, for the future. And um, so the idea is that these customers are eager to learn um, new skills, build up expertise to get quantum ready. And along the road, once they've built up these skills, um, eventually develop new algorithms and IP that may transform um, their business. And all of this is happening um, as we've seen today, while the field is, is advancing very rapidly, uh, technology milestones are being achieved. Um, we see an increasing choice of competing technologies with uh, trapped ions, with superconducting qubits and, and others that are joining the scene. And all of this happening while um, government initiatives really stimulate activity in this growing um, ecosystem. Um, so to flesh out this with a little bit more detail, let me share with you um, um, some details around one of our recent collaborations, uh, specifically in finance. Um, so we have worked together with Fidelity and really for them, the challenge is at, as, as we just discussed on the last slide is to try to experiment with quantum computing today um, in order to prepare um, for, for a future when quantum commuters may eventually be commercially viable. Um, and to this end, um, um, Fidelity, T Fidelity teamed up with the Amazon Quantum Solutions Lab uh, and really to dive deep into a proof of concept study around um, um, asset management. And um, apart from this collaboration with the Quantum Solutions Lab, the value that, that we provided to Fidelity was through our uh, quantum computing service, Amazon Bracket, um, that offered to Fidelity uh, to explore various technologies um, from circuit-based approaches involving superconducting qubits and trapped ions to annealing-based approaches and thereby also, uh, also offering um, uh, hybrid workflows that can potentially combine um, um, several of these approaches. Um, so for them, after this, uh, you know, concluding this first step on their uh, quantum trajectory, um, clearly, um, for, uh, as you can read here in this uh, Fidelity blog post, is the next step is to keep engaging with this emergent technology and thereby uh, continuing to upskill um, um, their employees. Um, to serve the needs of our customers like Fidelity and, and many others uh, actually across many verticals, um, we have built a pretty comprehensive um, ecosystem um, that essentially consists of three pillars. And in the, last in the next few minutes, I'd like to talk you uh, through these three pillars in some more detail. Um, so first and foremost, um, we have launched uh, Amazon Bracket, which is our quantum computing service fully embedded into the AWS cloud with the goal to create a level playing field um, for our customers. So a unified user experience that not only gives you access to uh, various quantum technologies uh, ranging from trapped ions um, uh, to superconducting qubits, 
and in the fullness of time, uh, others to join this portfolio, <clears throat> but also um, embedding the service um, into the larger AWS cloud and thereby allowing for um, end to end pipelines um, involving, you know, um, easy solutions for our customers around storage and security, for example. So um, on a high level, what Amazon Bracket looks like um, is schematically depicted here on this transparency. So Amazon Bracket <clears throat> is uh, fully embedded um, into the AWS cloud. You can access uh, Amazon Bracket today, um, either via um, straightforwardly via the console, uh, specifically in the console with a click of a button, you can um, spin up a managed uh, Jupyter notebook that runs on um, AWS infrastructure and comes with all um, program programming frameworks um, pre-installed. So really abstracting away um, um, uh, uh, all the heavy lifting typically involved around quantum computing and, and giving you easy access to our platform. You can also um, access Bracket locally uh, using our own SDK, in-house SDK, for example, and work from any uh, IDE of your choice and then hit the Amazon Bracket uh, APIs locally uh, from your laptop if you wish so. <clears throat> Within Bracket, we give um, access to state-of-the-art classical uh, simulators as well as actual quantum computers uh, at this point in time, we offer three quantum devices, um, a quantum annealer from D-Wave um, and two circuit-based machines, an iron, uh, one based on trapped ions from IonQ um, and another one uh, based on superconducting qubits from Rigetti, all of them having dedicated secure connections into the uh, AWS cloud. Um, so Two more um, comments uh, uh, that are uh, worthwhile to make here is that we have um, put some effort into um, making the life as easy as possible for our customers to uh, spin up and run hybrid algorithms. So where classical compute um, runs in tandem in a very orchestrated way uh, together with uh, quantum backends, um, that is something that will be important. We've heard today uh, in the NISC era where, you know, you offload part of your computation onto classical compute. And so we have optimized the full uh, classical compute environment for these kind of workloads. The second comment I wanted to make is um, since uh, Amazon Bracket is fully embedded into the cloud, we can leverage uh, integrations with other existing AWS uh, services for example, Amazon CloudWatch, with which you can track in real time on the console um, um, how your algorithm uh, converges. Um, you can also uh, um, access all your results once your job's complete um, on Amazon S3. That's our object level storage service. And then we keep our high um, posture when it comes to security with a tight integration with uh, identity and access management and um, our service for uh, data protection and, and key management service. <clears throat> um, uh, switching gears to um, the next pillar in our ecosystem, um, Obviously, we are fully aware of the fact that it is early days for quantum computing, and that is why we have also launched um, our, um, so to speak, own R&D effort, specifically the AWS Center for Quantum Computing. So this is a center located on the campus of uh, Caltech, um, where we have dedicated research teams that really try to, you know, give back to the community and push the boundaries with state-of-the-art um, research. Um, we have a quantum algorithms team that is led by Fernando Brandao and a quantum hardware team that is led by um, Oscar Painter. So in broad terms, um, these teams address uh, three major research lines, one of them being on near-term applications um, in this NISC era. The second one, uh, obviously not um, 
um, leaving out of sight our North Star, uh, and that is quantum error correction. And the last, uh, the last one is then uh, our efforts on actual quantum hardware and, and technology. And so to address these research um, areas, we've put together um, um, a very broad inter interdisciplinary team um, with uh, um, Fernando Brandao leading our quantum algorithms team, Oscar Painter leading our quantum hardware team, and um, then uh, several prominent figures. I guess everyone here has heard about uh, John Breskel. Um, then maybe it's worthwhile uh, worthwhile to mention that we have uh, also we are happy to have uh, local folks uh, from Chicago on board, Liang Zhang and and David Schuster, and all of them contributing. Um, to our own um, um, research efforts and thereby trying to, you know, just promote the field and the state of the art in, in quantum computing. Um, last but not least, um, let me spend a few minutes on the Amazon Quantum Solutions Lab. Uh, that is where I'm a member of and that is our vehicle to provide expert guidance to our customers through practical and, and cross-disciplinary support and, and collaboration. So, so really what it is, it is a collaboration and research program um, where our customers can work side by side with some quantum computing experts from AWS and, and, and start to explore quantum computing today, uh, typically in a very hands-on uh, fashion by building solutions and thereby um, you know, securing um, knowledge transfer and preparing our customers um, for the quantum future. To look at this in a little bit more detail, um, let me briefly remind ourselves of you know, the three prominent paradigms that we are facing in quantum computing. <clears throat> uh, first, for uh, starting with scalable quantum computers that are able to run arbitrary quantum algorithms. Um, these are the ones you know, that kick-started the field with in, in the 90s with, uh, for example, Shor's algorithm. Um, the next one are these so-called NISC devices, the ones that become online um, today that essentially do the same. So execute a sequence of elementary quantum gates, um, but without error correction meaning that errors will accumulate and that we are um, somewhat constrained, limited um, by our coherence budget. Um, but there are interesting ideas around. We've heard about these already today, for example, with these hybrid algorithms where you leverage the, the quantum computer only for short bursts of the calculation um, and embedding them in a larger classical um, optimization loop with prominent examples being VQE and, and QOA. And the last, uh, the last prominent paradigm are analog devices. So these do not rely on these um, elementary quantum logic gates, but really are programmed through some um, given engineered dynamics. So these are not universal machines as, as scalable quantum computers, but typically specific purpose machines. Um, therefore, they can only solve um, um, specific, say, optimization problems, but they have also uh, lower engineering requirements and are therefore easier to build. <clears throat> As you can see, for example, now with the new D-Wave Advantage chip that is online now and accessible through Bracket um, as of a few weeks ago with uh, around 5,000 qubits. Um, some of the use cases um, that uh, can be um, approached specifically in finance are um, portfolio optimization and, and option pricing. So um, work that we are doing with our customers along these uh, lines is, um, is for example, an option pricing centered around you know, the quantum amplitude estimation. So it has been shown that um, if you want to um, price optimally such a derivative, uh, you can use um, the QAE algorithm and, and potentially achieve a quadratic speed up over classical Monte Carlo methods. But um, as we've heard already today, uh, for 
for example, from Marco, uh, Marco Pistoia from JP Morgan. There are certainly still uh, several scientific challenges out there to do so, um, namely <clears throat> how to um, officially load classical data um, uh, onto your circuit as part of this workflow or um, finding more efficient implementations for um, the quantum amplitude estimation um, algorithm, um, for example, without, you know, there have been recent results of doing so without um, a phase estimation. On the um, portfolio management um, side, we typically see um, portfolio optimization problems obviously coming up a lot uh, or portfolio diversification strategies. All of them can be um, nicely visualized with these sort of graph problems where, for example, this maximum independent set solution here is, um, is, could be a solution to um, a portfolio diversification strategies with nodes corresponding to assets and edges corresponding um, to correlations. <clears throat> So to provide integrated, transparent solutions um, to these sort of use cases, um, we like to um, work backwards from this, uh, some specific use case, say portfolio optimization, and then really provide a transparent, integrated solution to our customers uh, by fanning out into several um, work streams. One, for example, here centered around these hybrid circuit-based variational algorithms, but then also providing um, um, solutions with these analog specific purpose machines. Um, and then also leveraging our um, HPC um, capabilities um, <clears throat> on AWS and provide benchmark these quantum approaches with classical state-of-the-art uh, quantum inspired or nature inspired um, um, techniques. And then we typically, you know, um, benchmark these results, bring them together, wrap up um, and try to develop a strategic roadmap with our customers that, that prepares them uh, and gets them ready for the quantum future. Um, with that, I've covered everything I wanted to say. Um, I will uh, close here with this overview of our quantum ecosystem and, and thank you very much for your attention.